Uh, now we're going to discuss uh, how to solve uh, constraints uh, of, uh, in, in the theory of arrays and in the, uh, in the context of SMT solving. The key issue of checking set of conjunction of a theory of array literals are finding the set of indices of interest where which index the arrays are being read and write and uh, finding the witness of disequality. If there is a point when you read something and you're expecting some other value, then you have a contradiction. And if no such thing exists, then you have satisfiability. So you have to find all the indices of interest and you read them and write in that position and see if anything is wrong. If nothing is wrong, then you just declare to be sad. So, uh, array solvers lazily or eagerly add instantiation of these three axioms for relevant indexes, and that's uh, pretty much it for solving theory of arrays. The problem is you may end up adding too many such uh, axioms, then you overwhelm the solvers, and then the reasoning becomes very difficult. And if you don't add enough, then uh, it can't deduce, uh, derive the it's a contradiction. Or uh, it keep uh, keep asking you to have more axiom, and eventually you find contradiction. So here I'm going to present in the particular design of uh, learning these uh, uh, solver, building this solver. It's uh, different solvers do it differently. So there is one paper which was published in 2009. Based on that, uh, this presentation has been built. First goal is to flattening of clauses. If you have a uh, sort of store of store or things like that, you need to flatten them out and introduce fresh symbols such that you don't uh, uh, handling large complex terms. Then you flatten clauses, you push them into a, a CDCL with equality reasoning and see if within the equality reasoning, for example, congruence can give you contradiction. If that is not, then you time to time you introduce new instances of uh, these axioms and then see if, uh, if you can find contradiction. Some point of time you saturate and you'll find that all the relevant indices have already uh, taken care of, then you formalize satisfied. Okay, the solvent maintains a set of definitions, a set of clauses. Okay, so uh, read and write, which is uh, terms are replaced by a fresh symbol and uh, definitions recorded, then record the replacement. For example, in this case, you have a store of store and then you have another store of store. So what do you do? You uh, you introduce, uh, you flatten the clauses and then you introduce a fresh symbol u and v and then you say u is equal to a store uh, of uh, something which itself is a store so you will write the new prime is equal to the store and this flatten all the definitions. Okay. Uh, so then similarly, you can need to, you may need to replace B of I with, with basically saying that U is equal to B of I. So theory of uh, equality is iteratively applied on the flattened clauses as follows. Uh, run CDCL QF on the flattened clauses. Uh, if no assignment found, then return unsat and you have another solvability. And uh, so in this process, then if you have don't have our satisfiability, you will have equivalence of terms. You have introduced several new terms like u, u prime, etc. If equality uh, permits, you may have equivalence classes among them. And we'll represent these equivalence classes like this. At relevant instantiation of theory axiom due to the discovery of the new equivalence classes, and then we will continue and go back to the step one. So what are those relevant axiom instantiations? Well, here are a few I will present and they will somehow complete and I am not going to prove of it that why these are sufficient. Uh, they are somewhat obvious from the uh, axiom systems. Okay? So if you have a, a, a definition like this when A of uh, store B i, uh, you clearly when you read A i, uh, then you will get V back. So this is the first axiom you must associate if you have such kind of a right, such kind of store. Uh, similarly, if you have a situation that you are writing at position I and somewhere with which is some, some another array is being read, which is equivalent, you have shown to be equivalent with A and A prime, then you must go and try to instantiate for the position 
j where you say that a if i either i is equal to j or these two value those these two arrays are same at position j this is the second array instantiated in the second array. Okay. Note that this uh, equivalence is the equivalence learned by applying the theory of equality on the terms added by the uh, in your constraint system. Here is another way you can introduce the second axiom is that uh, uh, you need to worry about this b. If this b is equal to b prime and uh, you want to say that okay b prime is accessing j so maybe this is this is important to remember that a j is equal to b j okay so therefore you need to introduce this this uh, axiom and similarly you need to uh, if you have two arrays in your system and you may want to introduce this this fact that either those two arrays are equal or there is a, some uh, position k which is a parametric of a and b such that they are different this point this is a third axiom and is arbitrarily applied This formula is sound because it only introduces the instantiations of axioms and uh, the completeness is because it covers all the interesting possible cases and uh, if it does not find uh, any contradiction then there is a way to construct a model and that is because we have sufficiently exhaustively applied our, uh, our axioms and it is not too difficult to see when you try to write down an algorithm to construct a a model out of all this after the saturating your your exam system so there are many optimizations this is pretty aggressive way of adding exams and then very often you can avoid adding them of these exams uh, so there we will present a few of them and uh, let's see some of them one by one and uh, that will help us understanding to reduce the number of exams instantiation that we may introduce if the terms are equivalent then don't introduce them again if if i is equal to i prime j is equal to j prime a is equal to a prime b is equal to b prime the two uh, axioms which are written here are same so thus don't introduce two copies of them just keep one of them similarly uh, uh, we must do the same thing when introducing the third axiom and we only need to produce evidence of the two arrays that are disequal by if, if EU, EUF finds such disequality. If in your uh, equivalence classes actually somebody has said A and B are not equal, then only go after it and then try to introduce this thing. Otherwise, don't do it. And uh, this is this keeps the completeness. Here is another one of uh, optimization where it, it uh, before applying the second uh, axiom. Uh, they consider these constraints and this b has to be uh, uh, some definition of non-linear such that uh, they have introduced this this axiom uh, we invite the viewer to work it out why if something is not in this non-linear then you don't need to introduce this axiom. 